Today is Saturday, September 14th, 2019. <laughs> Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the Jabbik Part 1. Jabbik Part 1. Judge a book by its cover. It's the preseason. We've got 20 new castaways to dive into, and we're going to make some predictions. This is part of our tradition here at Survivor Fans Podcast. Is that early in the season, before the first episode airs, we take a gander at their picture, maybe read their bio. Mm. If there's some video content, we will consume that too. And it's pretty light again this season. Yeah, it is. Even though and it's uh, it tricky took me to, all week. To- tr- tricky to find the the content too. So I'm gonna uh, have links to everything that we looked at as we went to put this oh, together. Good, because without you having the links there, I'd have never found. Most of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But before we get started, how was your summer? We've been on break since May. We have. Yeah, on a hiatus. It's it uh, it seemed very short. Somehow. Seemed short to you? It did. Oh, I really enjoyed my summer. Perfect. We had a great season in Alone. Uh, one we of, did. Another one of our favorite shows. Enjoyed Alone, it very much. Season six. Man, if you haven't checked that out, you definitely want to check that out. And season six went places, went to levels they'd never gone to before. So that, yeah, there were some huge. some people with just awesome skills. Yeah, and again, just stellar women. I mean, how long is it going to be before they do an all women alone, or at least give them fifty fifty? What's with this just three women thing? There, mm-hmm. There's a lot of women out there with great skills that are. Uh, available to to be on that show so i hope they do more because these three were pretty impressive too just like some of the others good stuff and then the other the surprise show for me turned out to be songland this show where they go in and show people songwriters pitching songs it's not so much about them singing and performing as it is they're there to to deliver a song to an artist and that artist is going to record it and then there's a podcast that goes with that, and it's just got tons of good content. So if you're interested in music at all, I highly recommend that that podcast. That and has been fun. The show's been really good, too. It's been interesting to see some of that. I mean, they're limited, again, in what they can show, and they amp up some of the drama, obviously. But it's so much better for me than The Voice or I can't even watch American Idol. So I've enjoyed that a lot more. What were you laughing at? Uh, you. In what sense? <laughs> Asking me about my summer, knowing I can't remember past two weeks. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, I just thought that was humorous. Well, it was my question. Yeah, I had some things prepared I was going to say, regardless of what you said. Oh, okay. So it really yeah. wasn't about my summer. Sure it was. Okay. As unfortunately, you had no content, I filled in the gap. <laughs> I thought, and, and I, well, that's a sad truth. You I know, wanna, a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. You got the goldfish memory thing going for some, <laughs> some recent events, at least. The uh, the other thing I wanted to do was to say thank you for the people who reached out during our hiatus and oh, yes. either called or sent and dropped us a note or something like that. We didn't always get right back to you because we checked out about halfway through. Totally checked out. Yeah, and on that, so we weren't monitoring things. We each thought the other one was, and we weren't and we weren't talking about it. We were just doing. You know, doing our summer thing. Yeah, but I we did say a lot a, of things. Yeah, I want to say a special thank home, you. I always enjoy, Marla will call, just call the voicemail, and she just tells us what their family's doing. What they're doing, and it's so lovely. It It's like a page out of Dandelion Wine, if you've ever read that book, where Ray Bradbury's describing summer, this like idyllic American slice of life marla delivers that in her voicemail messages and mm-hmm. i so look forward to that so thank you it's delightful and i'm so sorry i never get back to you marla 
<laughs> you, you, I'm not good at that. I used to be so good. You're supposed to handle all our social stuff. I know, but if, uh, <laughs> I didn't even get my planner finished until September for the year. And, it, you know, I kept saying, I'm missing people's birthdays. And, you know, uh-huh. and I thought, oh, yeah, never finished well, updating my are, planner for the year. Things are changing the older we get, huh? <laughs> The older speaking, I get. Speaking of things changing, Survivor's changing a little. We've got this new concept, Island mm-hmm. of the Idols, that we got a little taste of at the end of last season. So we'll talk about that. But the first thing that we're going to do is we've got Paul's roster up here on our TV Yee. screen looking at that. Great job on that, Paul. And we're going to go through in roster order. Thank you, Joanne, for helping assemble. I remembered so I didn't have to get a lecture. The documents in roster <laughs> order this time so we can do our review and reflect Paul's roster, the visual roster, <laughs> which I used when I was putting together my notes here. Yeah. So we're at first up, we've got, what is it? Is that orange? No. I mean, yes. Yeah, so orange and purple are the two tribes. So I think it's Lyro and Vokai. Uh, <clears throat> that's as good a guess as any. Yeah, so we're going to start with the we orange tribe. We are saying, tribe. Uh, I think I was saying Lyro. Or... That's that's certainly a tendency for Americans Lyro. to do. I think with Asian Pacific languages, they tend to emphasize the I in that type of a spelling situation, but I could be wrong. Well, where's we'll, Jeff when you need him? We'll figure. Well, yeah, he's a little checked out too, isn't he? <laughs> we'll talk some <laughs> more about to that be. too. Yeah, but first up, we're going to go through the tribe, and we've got A. A. Ron, that Key and Peel uh, skit. You hadn't seen it, huh? When I saw this no, guy's I name, had and never I, seen it. I started talking about A. A. Ron. You had no I'm like, clue. What? So she had to go watch that. If you haven't seen the Key uh, and Peel, someone sketch. sent it to me to watch. So. Uh-huh. So I watched it yeah. for, for you, someone who sent it to me. To see the substitute teacher. <clears throat> Why skit. you laughed so hard and you cannot say Aaron. No, it's always A. A. Ron now. I, Balake didn't stick with me, but A. A. So Aaron is the, and I'll go, the guy's name. Yeah, A. A. Ron. So, <laughs> all right. So first up, we've got A. A. Ron Meredith. He's 36 and he lives in Warwick, Rhode Island. Grew up in what, Connecticut? And he's a gym owner. I liked him. Yeah? I just did. What, what stood out? I had a different response. I'm looking at I, my notes. I know you did, <laughs> but I, I guess I liked he loves being a father. Uh huh. And admirable. Yes. He is. Uh, he loves his father, mm-hmm. and it, he seems to have a lot of respect. His father was a police officer for twenty five years, so that makes me think. You know, he probably has good morals, and uh, not that that matters for here nor there, but he just seemed like a really nice guy. Mm-hmm. And he he kind of feels like the father type, but he doesn't want to play that role but he's already wanting to provide that's just kind of his thing is that he wants to provide and i i don't know he's big he's burly he he looks like he'd be comforting Uh like he would make you feel safe like if he had seen more than one or two seasons of survivor he would have compared himself to rupert instead of ozzy he described Ozzy mm. as being a social threat, which to me indicates okay, that A.A. That a. A. Ron doesn't know much about Survivor. <laughs> that was the only thing that gave me pause. He said, like Ozzy, and he did say, you know, social game. And I thought, uh, Aaron. And it has gotten better. So maybe he's trying to give Ozzy credit. I don't know. But just to actually say that to me is a tell. Well, he said. I think he's a recruit. The, the words he used to describe himself, attractive, intelligent, and strong. His pet peeves are ignorance, driving slow in the left lane, and lazy people. Uh, he says he has a good social game. He knows how to work people. Of course, you know, you notice a whole lot of them say that now sure. in their bios. Uh, but he said usually people really like, like him when they get to know him and they trust him. But with him, I kind of think that's going to be true. Hmm. He's going to be a huge target because, but I have him, of course, making the merge just because he's big and strong. But um, Yeah, you never know these days because things have changed. Historically, a strong male like that, burly guy, although he kind of lumbers when he's running. At least that's what that Twitter video looked like. That could have just been slow motion, but 
He doesn't look like he moves fluidly. Well, he was one of the main ones on that tribe that I thought I would like. Mm-hmm. I wrote uh, that he seemed bland and that he's possibly a dad oh, on vacation. Mean. Uh, that's not mean. Okay. Well, we disagree, but I bet yes. you put him merging. I did for the historical well, of course. reason. Yeah. There's that perception that you need that physical strength. And I think there's some kind of tug of rope thing or rope pulling element in the first challenge. So, you know, he's going to demonstrate his value in the course of that. So. He listed lifting as his hobby, and I get he's a gym owner, but the thing you do for fun and leisure, lifting, hmm, okay, maybe. I don't, I don't know. That's a different mindset than I have, obviously. Well, people that like that, it it really can become addictive. Okay, in, in addictive? Something you want to, you really want to I don't know that addictive is a hobby, but well, we're just differing on def- definition, I think. You're a little addictive with your hobbies, like the games yeah as you're screaming and yelling in there and i'm thinking <laughs> that it's not sounding like fun in there well you're hunting and you're being hunted so <laughs> it is stressful but oh, yeah oh okay well i just thought i'd I point that out yeah <clears throat> but that's mm, nice hobby. contrast anything else you want to say about a a ron i don't think so i like him you don't <laughs> i didn't say i didn't like him i said he seemed bland <laughs> And it, he he's not a fan, so he he's not going to know what's going on in the context of the game. Yeah, I, I I have to admit, I really am leaning more strongly toward the fans this time for because mm-hmm. well, we always do. I read their bio and it's like you don't sound like a fan, right? And so we believe that that means that in some cases there's going to be less incentive, but. Yeah, a million dollars is a pretty strong it's, incentive. So. Yeah, on some of it, it's like, oh, you watched that season. Right. We'll get there. If you're done, we'll move on. We'll move on to Chelsea Walker, 26 years old. She's uh, living in Los Angeles. What's a digital content creator? Why, my dear, that's what you and I do when we create podcasts. We, too, are digital content creators. Actually, what she does she is... She say so. Yeah. Yes, I do say so. <laughs> Anyone contributing to the podcast yeah. is a digital content creator, if okay, that's what you're going to go with as your title. But she, uh, if you've ever gone to the Internet Movie Database, IMDb, and looked something up, which I know you yes, have. I have. So she helps curate entries at, at that site, is my understanding. That sounds boring. Possibly. <laughs> what if you have a love of movies and you're well, digging up all yeah. these cool facts yeah. for people? Okay. She's helping make sure that when we ask a question about, oh, what's what was that movie so and so was in, or what's it's well, usually an actor's name that we can't remember, right? But that's good for you. Yeah. There's so much we can't remember. It yeah. takes both of us. Yeah. Okay. So Chelsea says she is driven, competitive, and scrappy, and she has dreamed of playing since she was eight years old. She's applied five times. She said she never gave up, and that she was gonna fight to prove herself Mm -hmm. Um, she sees parts of wentworth and poverty in herself she's a young female i'm always surprised when they don't reference poverty well yeah yeah. and there actually Um, are some this season that don't so that was nice (laughs) well i didn't necessarily have a great response to her at First, Mm -hmm. I do think she'll make the merge. I think she's very physical. My fear for her is that, oh, she's such a fan. She's going to try too hard and do kind of like, you know, Cochran did on his very first. Just wanting to do so much. and And they're so excited about that that they can slip up in the game and make crucial errors. Yeah, when she gets emotional talking about finally making it on the show, which... Hey, any fan who's applied a lot will. Yeah. I'm not trying to disqualify that or discount it in any way, but she doesn't. She doesn't have herself in check. Well, I think if she can get that in Harness check, it, yeah, and that she could go really deep. Okay, I, I think she's capable. Okay, but uh, I, I that's my fear is yes. that she's just going to go too hard, too fast, and. Try too hard exposed. vibe is, is very out there for her. Okay, so we both got her making the merge though. Yes, right? okay. definitely. Next up, we got Dean Kowalski, 28. He uh, grew up in New Jersey. He's now in New York City. He does tech sales for okay. Google. Already boo. Already boo? 
Okay. Anytime I hear sales, I think, I don't like it when people pressure me. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he does. That's just, you know, my own. I don't know. You watch his audition video and you'll. Yeah. You get that sense. Yeah. He used to be an algebra one teacher. Yes. His hobbies are basketball, crafts, and DJing. He says he's jovial, observant, and likable. He's most like Wendell for his quiet leadership. He has the ability to get along with others, and his athletic and puzzle abilities will make him a threat within challenges. Uh Uh-oh. That bothers me when people say they have great puzzle abilities because then they say they do and they get out there and flub it up and then people don't like them. Yeah, it's a whole different thing to do it with pressure on. But exactly, yeah. yes. Yep, but he says he's constantly practicing crosswords and sudokus and all kinds of stuff. So so do I, and I don't think I could do a lot of the puzzles. <laughs> so on paper, I was having a really positive reaction to him. Uh, oh, see, I did. On paper. So he was talking about how proud he was of being an Algebra One teacher and, you know, being the, the teacher who got the most students through the end of the year exam. That's huge. And he, as his inspiration, he lists a student. That's great. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, too, have a reaction to salespeople similar mm-hmm. to yours. I'm not that keen on it. I find out he sells for Google, one of the worst, absolutely worst salespeople I've ever interacted with was this lady from Google. And she was this entitled, she was just a kind of a horrible person she was just to one have to person. deal with, right? One. And so yeah, I find out he's doing sales for Google, which, come on, how hard is that? Are you going to pat yourself on your back for selling ads for Google? That stuff sells itself. So I, I, I don't know. But anyway, I, and then I watched Man. his au- audition video, and I was like, whoa, I'm getting an American Psycho vibe off this guy. <laughs> I don't like him, you know, Christian Bale in that crazy movie. I'm not liking him at all. And so I had, so I started off super way on the positive side, and then the pendulum swung way over to the other side. Well, my comment was I'm not sure he's a fan. And uh, I thought he seems likable, but I'm just not sure about because he's in sales and all. Mm -hmm. That kind of made me more skeptical. But. For this purpose, I definitely expect him to make the merge anyway because he's young and strong. Yeah, he's one of the youngest, most fit people on their tribe. Yeah. Probably is the most physically fit person there. So as long as he doesn't annoy other exactly. people. Exactly. That would be the thing. He's got, he stands a good chance of making the merge unless somehow an alliance forms that's all about well, voting off the biggest threat. True. Which but I think is the downside to that. They have weaker people that they tend to, you know, at least in the past, have tended to go for. So it depends on I, the, my mindset is still goes that way. Right. Depends on what the controlling alliance ends up valuing, and you never quite know how that's going to happen beforehand. True. So, so there's good reason to think he would make the merge, but then sort of be an immediate target to be voted out yeah. after the merge. He fits that criteria if he makes it that far. Okay, next up we have Elaine. She's 41 years old from Kentucky. She's a factory worker. She said she is independent, stubborn, and kind. Now, she's got hobbies, four-wheeling, fishing, going out on the boat. That's like leisure activities that are fun. You okay. contrast that with lifting, and I'm like, okay, I think uh, okay. I think Elaine won the hobbies <laughs> category. Okay. Uh, Stacy's tangent. Okay, pet peeves. Guys who think women aren't their equals. Girls who think they need to use their body to get ahead. And people who think they're better than others. I think I am most like Rupert. I'm rough and raw on the outside and a big marshmallow on the inside. (laughs) He seems to be a very kind person, just like me. She shares Donathan's history of caring for sick family members, and she's from Kentucky. So oh, wow. that was an interesting, I, I thought, oh, I wonder if they were part of a similar casting wave at some point. Yeah, because she uh, talked a lot about that, actually, to the different people she had taken care of mm-hmm. in her life. In her bio, yeah. Yes, and still is. She took still the, is. the time to put yeah. that in her bio, yeah. Mm-hmm. She said they actually said that was her biggest accomplishments mm-hmm. in life, was taking care of her loved ones that needed her. And uh, 
She thinks she'll be underestimated as not a threat, um, but that they'll see her as an ally with her people skills and her ability to relate to lots of types of people. I, I really hope she lasts a long time, but... Uh, she's not as young or as fit as the others, and I know that she could be sent home early. I hope that doesn't happen, but I did put no merge. My initial... I hope I'm wrong. My my first impression was no merge also, but then I, I thought... Like I like her. I, I did like her too, and then I thought, okay, maybe this is where the twist is going to have some value. Because my, my thought was, wouldn't it be interesting to see what she could do with Sanders' guidance. Mm -hmm. So I think that True. could that could be a pivotal huge thing if she can survive long enough to and ends up making it out there. You know what? I haven't once thought about that influence. <laughs> the Island of I Idols, haven't. the theme of the season. <laughs> okay. I know, but I've not looked at these people about, at so that angle. You're welcome. Food for thought. <laughs> Thanks. Now I have to redo things in my brain again. Uh huh. No, but I, that is interesting, and it is a good point. It good made job. it more compelling. And when I was trying to pick my seven no merges, I came back and said, "Elaine's going to make the merge because Sandra's going to help her." I hope you were right. <laughs> All right. I do. Next up, we have Elizabeth Beisel. 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 Twenty six from Rhode Island. She was or no she is present tense she's an olympic medalist she's not in the olympics anymore she's not training for them no but she was uh, in the olympics for three times and she's a two-time olympic medalist with a silver and a bronze i believe mm -hmm. and um she says she is gregarious competitive and loyal she's those qualities you find in athletes especially yeah, high, yeah. high tier athletes yeah and she's on survivor because she wants to compete again and she retired from swimming a year ago and she's missing challenging herself and bringing herself to the edge the second reason is of course the million dollars <laughs> yeah i could tell some of the things she said she's got a sense of humor like in her uh that audition video, I think that was... No, that wasn't really an audition video. It was just like a quick interview video with her uh, where she was talking about what she was up to since she had retired from training for the Olympics. Anyway, she talked about adulting and how <laughs> her <laughs> acting as an adult, uh, her and her yeah, brother had yeah. bought a, a house and things like that. So I thought, oh, you got a, you got a good sense of humor. But c Olympic medalists, they don't have... Olympic athletes don't do well here. I've referenced Katrina Radke, a previous Olympic medal swinner, swimmer. Sh swinner. Yeah, from the uh, Triple H season, from the Helos, Helos, Healers, Hustlers, and Heroes season. I'm sure I got that order wrong, but anyway, you, you might recall her, or you may not, for a very good reason. They they just don't do well. I'll re reference Crystal. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. She, and you know what? She referenced Kara Kay. That's who she thought she's most like. And I thought, well, I think you've seen one season of Survivor, and that was David that was my versus thought too. Goliath. I don't think she's a fan. Yeah. And Jeff described her as, well, she's a new fan of the show. Yeah. Nice In other try. words, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we know why you recruit her. You like getting Olympic athletes. They do not do well. I don't expect anything of her. I don't see anything. I don't expect anything more from her than a physical contribution. Well, she says she has it all physical, mental, social, and she's strong and tough, and she will fight to the That's end. right. She's just as smart as Ryan Lochte, I'm sure of it. She's also a horrendous ummer. And that video, oh, yeah, that, that was driving me nuts. And I had no problem putting Elizabeth down as a no merge. Oh, I put her down as a merge. I think her strength, she she looks like a pretty good woman standing next to those others. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, pretty good woman. Pretty large, tall woman. Mm -hmm. Her physical and presence, she looked, you thought, would yes, be valued. Yeah. Would be valued, yes. <laughs> and so, I... Looks like a pretty good woman. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good thing. I know you know to speak Joanne, but not everybody does. Uh huh. Joanne's getting worse. All right, so, so we differ gonna... on Elizabeth. <clears throat> yep, we do. Next up, Karishma Patel, 37, 
Uh, originally from Philadelphia, now she's in Houston. She's a personal injury lawyer, first Indian American contestant on the show. Woohoo! All right. I did not have a positive reaction. She's impressive and resume. I don't know why. Well, personal injury lawyer is that's probably it. Gives me pause. Yep. And lawyer. What, what period. You, lawyers have challenges on the show. And that's just we're so bad anymore. Why? Judgmental people. That wasn't being judgmental. That's a statement of the fact about well, lawyers uh, not particularly doing uh, well on the show, just like Olympic athletes well, don't. Well, that's true. But still. All right. So, uh, and personal injury lawyer, what do you want in a personal injury lawyer? You want someone who will fight. Yeah. Well, what do you not want on Survivor, especially in the early game? Well, in the pictures they've chosen to show of her, are of her like arguing with someone and pointing her finger, you know, mm -hmm. at somebody, and and there was just a little short clip, and you know she was saying something that made it sound like she may not have been. It might be a misdirect. Yeah. Sound like she was uh, uh, voicing a strong opinion and pointing at somebody as she did it. So it's a lot of pressure to be the first in a particular group that you're representing and i think we've got someone else in that group on this tribe too that's coming up so there's going to be a lot of pressure on her it's if she's a, at all a good lawyer and i'm going to guess she is she's got an impressive resume then she's going to be like ready to fight at the drop of a hat <laughs> and i just don't think yeah. some of those things are well, compatible with the skill set that she needs and like you i felt um immediately that she was a recruit so I'm yeah. I'm concerned about her ability to play well with others, and I went to no merge on charisma. She says she's reliable, impulsive, and charismatic. Impulsive, an impulsive, impulsive fighter. Impulsive, yeah. Yeah. Um, her hobbies she listed as experimental cooking, hosting theme parties, and reading travel blogs. Mm -hmm. Her pet peeves are party poopers. Girls who play dumb for attention, and when the tire hits the curb while parallel parking, oh, that's a mansplaining, <laughs> passive-aggressive behavior, and PDA. <laughs> I thought, hmm, it's got an awful long list of pet yes, peeves. Yeah. And that was another thing that made me think, hmm, I think she could be confrontational. Yep. So, um, we'll merge, no merge. Well, I said no merge. Yep. All right, we agreed you on that too. one. That's, yeah. I'm, I don't know. I'm surprised. I thought, get looking at her and her size, and she looks strong, but that's why I thought she would be confrontational. Mm -hmm. Okay, Missy, 24. She's from Decatur, Georgia, now living in Tacoma, Washington. Air Force veteran. Says so she's an entrepreneur now. Yep. Her pet peeves are annoying human beings. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Which she annoyed you greatly in her video. Yes. Um, she says she's relentless, clever, and decently dope. I thought, okay. I like the alliteration. <laughs> she says she's most like Kim. That I love that reference. That yeah, was good. Yeah, she played both sides effortlessly. I would play like this. Kill him with a smile. Why do you think you'll survive Survivor? She answered, because now I'm confused about this. Beyonce wrote a song about surviving, so I have to honor Queen B. We thought, huh? She's just basically saying I'm a Beyonce fan and I'm going to win. So. I know, but they ask, why do you think you'll survive? Yeah, she's being clever. I found her incredibly awkward on camera. <clears throat> and, yeah. and I felt embarrassed for her watching her and... Yes, visibly, she seems super fit, and uh, she's going to be a physical threat, and they'll need that component, but there's not a lot of content here. I'm, I applaud her for traveling the world on a budget. That's awesome, and getting that kind of exposure. Yeah, but is that why she's here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, and the whole I'm an entrepreneur it's a cheap way to do it, thing is, hey, here's a free vacation, yeah. Yeah, so there's just, there didn't seem to be a lot to her. I hope there's more to her. I was really gung-ho at first until I watched that video. And, and there were good things in the video, I thought. And then she, she would immediately song, cancel it out. And she would say something, I'd think, yeah, yeah, that girl could play. And then she'd do something else. So it was flip-flopping so much. 
to into different personality to try I guess trying to show different sides of yourself but it was I found it way more confusing however I My stayed impression. with merge yeah I left that at merge too because they're gonna need some of her some for, strength yeah some of what she can develop deliver in the physical space for sure but yeah she's still very very much figuring out who she is she doesn't really have just very raw missy is very she's in progress she's a work in progress and i don't think she's got what she what one needs to win this game but i can't I didn't get any sense of it from anything about her see i was all ready to believe that group of women on that tribe mm -hmm. could could bond together and that they were going you know pick off the guys and da 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 yeah. and then i Possibility. Going, I don't like this one. Right. And, I don't, and so now I'm more, I'm confused about that. <laughs> just okay. looking at the picture, I was like, hey, look at all those strong looking women. Yes. And moving on, Ronnie Barda, 35 from Brockton, Massachusetts, now in Henderson, Nevada. Pro poker player, right up there with Olympic athletes for people who don't tend to do well on Survivor, but Survivor keeps going back to that well because. I don't know. I guess maybe they like Jean Robert. He's the one who's done uh, the best. That that. But Jean Robert. I'd be so fine if they didn't. And you got previous examples that you know they don't do well. Garrett Adelstein in Kagayan. He went home with an idol in his pocket. <laughs> Way to read the room. <laughs> Anna Kate <laughs> from Co Wrong. You know, she's okay. that wackadoodle anti <clears throat> Well, before you say too much about him, let me read this. Okay. He says he's resilient, analytical, and savvy. <laughs> <laughs> he grew up in a rough place. He's been to travel to 30 countries. Yep. He's a physical beast and has a strong social game from his poker skills. I'll be able to break hearts when I need to. Even my own. The relationships will be real, but the ultimate goal will always be to be a sole survivor. I can be charismatic and read people really well. Now, I, I bought all that kind of right up to I watched that dang video of that woman that just bluffed him. I watched a great oh clip gosh. of him facing off, yeah, against the former Miss Finland, Miss Universe contestant. You have got to watch that video, guys. Yeah, if you're, and this is part of his <laughs> legacy now, because it's, it's been seen a lot. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, you totally get the logic behind why you would seek out pro poker players. You would think mm -hmm. that that skill set would just match up really well with Survivor and would get them an advantage. History says otherwise. Watch this video, and your expectations for good old Runny they will drop got quite her. a bit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> she's the one that did the reading. Yeah. Yeah, she's the strategist. Anyway, I saw that, and I thought, oh, well, honey. I'm going to hit the reset button. Okay. Yeah, I got no merge for Runny. I think he's going to get uh, he's gonna get dropped like those other poker players before the merge. Oh, I put, I put merge anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know if you're matching up what you saw with what you should expect I know. there. I'm, yeah, but I'm only looking at it from the other people's point of view of what he can do for them physically. And I think he's kind of goofy dorky. Yeah, definitely. And that I think they'll be entertained by that. And so that's why I thought they would... Uh, th I don't think they're going to feel as threatened by him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought they'd keep him around for his strength. I think it's part of that saying you're a pro poker player... But then it's like strong? saying I'm a master strategist. Yeah, exactly. It's, I, I don't know. So yeah, okay. I, I, I see got, your point. I got no merge. You got merge. Yep. Next up, Tom Laidlaw, 60 years old from Ontario, Canada. Now from Greenwich, Connecticut. He's a former National Hockey League player. He says he's disciplined, dedicated, and stubborn. His pet peeves are people driving slow in the fast lane. He says he's a fan. He even listed watching Survivor as one of his hobbies, which I think, yes, that qualifies as a leisure time activity. And he's most like Ben the Marine. He did whatever he had to. I'm interested to see how he handles the physical elements at 60. And I was open-minded to him. Fit. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he looks very fit for 60. And uh, I don't know anything about him as a hockey player or anything like that, but I read something that really put me off of him. He's evidently been spoiling details from this season in interviews already. 
And so I didn't validate that. I just saw people reference it. I saw warnings, hey, stay away from so don't go Tom, looking. Tom Laidlaw's interviews because he talks about the first voted off and talks about where he went out. And he's just, he doesn't seem to have any sense. If that's the case, I would say that's a person who's got no sense or respect for the game. And uh, I don't think that's helping build interest in it at all. So he's really misguided. Yeah, because my first thought was, yeah, he's 60, but he looks pretty good. I don't know how he hold up the long run. I think he's... And then I saw him in that stupid mattress commercial, and I thought, no merge. Yeah, I went with no merge, too. I think he he's he's got that BB vibe. He's going to get pissed off. He's going to do an engineered quit, something along those lines, or he'll just do something that annoys people and makes it easy for them to vote him out. So I'm, I'm I think going, he's going to annoy. Yeah. yeah, no merge for him. Yeah. Okay, Vince, 27, from Merced, California, now in Palo Alto. Uh, He's an admissions counselor. His hobbies are singing, photography, thrifting, and hunting for cool, unique cafes. You know, I had a real emotional response when I was reading Vince's bio. He said his proudest accomplishment was buying his mom a new refrigerator, and that really... That touched me. My mom passed away the day my grades uh, posted so that I knew I was going to graduate from college. So I never got to do anything for her. I never, and I was in, you know, in debt at that point. And so when I read that about him, I just had a huge, and I think that it completely influenced me towards him at all because of that emotional Mm. response that I had that, and, uh, so it, very positive, and he mentioned uh, he dropped a 209 reference, which is the Stockton Merced area. So he grew up just south of where we are here. Mm. Yeah, and uh, he's well, a super fan, and you know he, he expects to play under the radar. And, he's a super fan. Yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. And his uh, family watch too, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember that. He, well, I don't remember hearing hmm. that. So, well, that's what I have in my notes. They they watched as a family. So yeah, and he's got this metaphysical element. Did you pick up on that? Where the he's expected to be the next shaman in his family? Oh wait a minute. Uh, I think I got my pages mixed up. <clears throat> that is not him. I was looking at there. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. In in any case, like I said, I had this uh, emotional reaction. And uh, there's that nearness, just uh, geo nearness to us here, and it being a, a fan, and I got him down as making the merge and a possible USB. Now I'd say there's a twist to that because I kept you know digging, looking around for other uh, things, and when I was listening to the um, uh, one of the interviews with him that Josh Wiggler did. And he talked about the pressure that he's feeling because he had just recently come out to his family. And that's a really challenging thing for him in his community, in the Hmong community. And he's he's got a lot of that on his shoulders as he goes into that. And so he's going to be on the national stage and he's worried about all what all that's going to mean for him. So, wow, you're carrying a lot. On well, I saw something shoulders. though that said he didn't care what people thought. That's well, one of the things he said in the clip is, "Yeah, well, I used to, but now I don't care what anybody thinks." He, I think he's certainly had to develop that as a defensive mechanism because, mm-hmm. like I said, he only recently came out to his family because his mom was haranguing <laughs> and bugging him about not being married and ask mm-hmm. him straight up without letting go multiple times if he were gay or not, and he finally said yes. And so he's worked through that with them, but then there's the greater family and then within the community. And he was talking about right. all that, and I was like, oh, wow, that is a lot to be carrying mm-hmm. with you it is before the game started to have that on your mind. And so it, I'm, I still had this, like I said, strong initial jabbit reaction to him. And yeah. he, he's in my final four for sure. So. Oh, see, I didn't have all that reaction. Nope, nor his, should you. You, you his, have um, lived my life. <laughs> his, uh, he's very f- proud of his father's accomplishments. His father was a refugee, and he says he's most like Sheehan because she didn't let anyone mess with her. Sari because she's humble, analytical, strategic, 
and inspirational, and Natalie Anderson because she was loyal, innovative, and an overall boss. How about that? That's a heck of a trifecta for yeah. for Survivor players. Great references he for said, Vince. He uh, said, I'm pretty crafty and will be able to use his smarts to create plans and execute votes that will eliminate anyone I feel is a threat to my game. I thought, I think he's going to be a real schemer, but that could get him out early, too. Or it could take him deep. But he's the kind of person that it just depends on how the people that are playing the game and how they view him. I don't know that he's physically fit. He doesn't talk of anything about the physicality. And so I don't know. If he's not good in challenges, um, I've got him. I'm kind of on the fence with him. Mm-hmm. And I've on got the fence him, with Vince. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got him making the merge, okay. but, but I was a little on the fence. I only chose seven people, and he would be one of the ones I might six? consider. Yeah, I meant six. I have, he would, he's a possible seventh mm-hmm. to no merge. Okay. And so what's, I'll talk I, about I totally later. understand that. Again, I, when I, you know, I'd had a little time away from my assessment of these folks, and I thought, wow, that was just a, pure base emotional reaction yeah because you hadn't shared that with me and i was locked on to him yeah i thought wow we really saw him how did you come at that so differently differently. yeah Yeah, i was like yep i get it really i totally get it and like i said i'm i'm weighing so thanks for sharing i understand that more now extra information yeah so Okay. I think that's it, right? Yep. We finished off Lyro or Lairo. Moving as you on said. to the Vakai tribe, or however it's pronounced. Yes. And first up, we have Dan, who's 48. He lived in New York City, now in Los Angeles, and he's a talent manager. How's that for an occupation? I would think that's a particularly, that might be one that's really good at helping you navigate things that would come up in Survivor. I hadn't thought about it, but. Uh, if he tells these people that he's a talent manager, they might want to make friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't Hadn't coming at, at it from that angle. I, I didn't. I didn't. I'm not talking about it. That's good too. I like that. But I wasn't talking about it from what he might could do hmm. for him after the show. Although, no, but that's what it made me think about. Yeah, it. yeah. I, that's good. Oh, you yeah. went there. I just went at it. Came at it from the perspective of here's someone who. Is an intermediate. They're in the middle, and being mm-hmm. able to navigate the middle is a huge skill, hugely valuable skill for someone who's repping someone else to someone. Else. So you're not it. You're trying to get someone to you know take your person on for this project. Yeah, but you got to be hardcore because there's times you got to pit your people against each other. You're representing more than one person up for a a role, and you got to throw one under the bus and get it. You know, if you think somebody else is the better fit. and Sure. So you, you got to. I think this is exactly to my point in that yep. talent manager could be a really good training it, ground exactly. for survivor, survivor exactly. skills. That's all. We have the same point. Okay. His hobbies, adventure, travel, movies, and fitness. Pet peeves, trouble dealing with stubborn people, ignorance, and close, close-mindedness. He said he's hardworking, articulate, and charming. I'm also a big softy. I cried at Finding Nemo. He doesn't strike me as a big softy, but no, no, doesn't... he's he's got that squinty, mm. pinched look that's very off-putting to me. And he also looks very tired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in some of the pictures, he just looks tired. Well, I thought he looked physically fit, though. I thought he could. Oh yeah, he might could do well with yeah. the physical side. I don't know about endurance for the long haul um because of you know the older you are let's face it he has, it is harder he but. has superior skills at name dropping yeah because he referenced bob crowley yule kwan tom westman and boston rob and cochran in the who are you most like question but he described himself as having a superior physicality and that he does look fit but when you say that you have a superior physicality. I don't know. Man. There's a part of me thinks he's a bit delusional, a little over yeah. evaluating himself. Like, well, let's see how you compare yourself to the other. And they don't need him. They don't need him. This tribe's got 
physicality on the male side for sure. They don't need him, and so I went with no merge. Okay, that's interesting because my feedback is uh, he seems like a nice guy. Being the oldest man concerns me for his longevity in the game and not sure his personality will go over well. But I think he could make the merge for his strength, but I'm calling no merge. Okay, so we got to know so merge both, but different ways. Yeah. Yeah. And the ages are skewing higher this season on both tribes. So I'm not sure age no, is going to be that big a deal. People. The super young ones are actually stand out as being different yeah. because of that. Speaking of super young ones, next up we've got Jack. Hey, I got hair like Joe used to have, Nick Ting, at 23 years old. Graduate hey. student. Graduate student, yes. From Virginia. Yeah. His pet peeves are being wasteful, rudeness, and loud eating. Ah, a fellow misophonian. <laughs> I'm determined, dreamer, and social. I can be perceived as laid back, long haired, and ditzy. Uh, but in reality, he can be quite intellectual, intentional, and he loves having serious, deep conversations with people. Look, if you describe yourself as being intellectual and then add, and I love deep conversations, you probably don't fit the bill. Serious, deep conversations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's the one that's a huge fan and watched with his family. Yeah, okay. Yes, the family. So he grew up with Survivor with his family. That makes me like him. He seems like a cute kid, but he's still a kid. Let's not be. And Yeah, uh, you hear him talk and you're like, oh, yeah, you're, yeah, he's, you're not he's fully he's baked 23, yet. He's yeah. Yeah. But he's exactly he's where still, he's supposed to be. Yeah, he's still figuring out who he is. Um, but he, he says he plans to be a fierce competitor from the background. Uh, and my thought well, was, no, that's not that how that now. works, Jack. <laughs> you. <laughs> Goofball, oh, well. I yeah. know. I heard you say that. Yep. Okay. Um, I heard it in my head. He was okay. an on-site. Like, he was there in a previous season alternate. Yeah. On location yeah. alternate. They told him he, he might not make it on, but they wanted to take him out there as an alternate. And, and Probe's comment on him a, was... A week or something. Yeah, it was, that was probably for the best. For he wasn't quite, quite ready. Yes. And they're like, yeah, yes. we got Joe. We don't need another hair. He needed to bake another year. <laughs> yes. Need a little so. more time in the oven. I think he probably still does. But you know he's going to do, from the physicality perspective, he's going to do awesome. He played soccer, I think, at a real oh, competitive yeah. level. And so he's going to have cardio for yeah, days. Yeah, he's going to make the merge. Come on. Yeah, totally and, makes the merge. And I think people won't think of him as, as, as big a threat because they don't think he has... You know, everything it takes. Uh, and Jesus got the physicality, sure. But I think he could go deep with a good alliance. But he's he seems too nice for them to take him to the end. I mean, who's going to take somebody that's... He just seems like a nice kid. Yeah, who's going to win and his way through too the likeable. end. And you can tell he's there to be Joe. So, yeah, well, no surprise. So I think he's too likable. He's, Nobody's going to take him to the end. But he could go deep. Totally makes the merch. Moving on. Jamal. Jamal. I like him. <laughs> He's so even keel. So balanced. Yeah. He's 33 years old, from New Jersey, now living in Providence, Rhode Island. He's an admissions counselor. Like Vince, just for different yep. grade yep. target area. His hobbies are coaching basketball, taking West African and salsa dance lessons, teaching myself the bass guitar, and losing in fantasy football leagues. <laughs> he's six I've got a ah, sense of humor. He, yes, he's six foot three, and I don't think he's the tallest one out there. So, mm. yeah, there's some big guys out there this time. He said he's balanced, inquisitive, and present. Like Jack, he's almost made it on the show before, too. Yep. I've been intensely studying this game. I feel like I have a good handle on what to do in order to give myself the best shot at making it to the end with enough goodwill to get votes. People will be happy to write my name down at the end. He, he really sells himself well, even on paper. He's smooth. And, and I think <laughs> he's going to be likable. Yeah. And definitely the merge. Um, Super And talented. I got him in my final four. Oh, wow. I okay. like him. He's just so tall, so big, physical, imposing presence. People are scared of that. He Jamal is they not are, the middle. Winners mm, come from the middle. 
Jamal's not from the middle. He's standout outlier kind of guy. Okay. Girls, go watch his audition tape because I thought, dang, he's <laughs> cute. He's well, and, you know what I noticed about him? A little foreshadowing for someone we're going to talk about uh, that's coming up. is that He had the good sense to cut his hair short before he went out in that tropical environment. Oh, but it, it, it looked good on the... T- tape the long hair yeah but he had really he had the hair longer than probably any of the women that are in this season i think in in that video but i put after watching he's the, pragmatic uh, too yeah after <laughs> watching the audition tape he's very charismatic which may be clouding my thoughts but i think he <laughs> could go deep i like him okay all right yeah i got jamal making the merge too but at final four i couldn't see him there it, it would have to be the meat shield alliance you are not a woman Fair enough. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. It, it would have to be some kind of meat shield alliance, and I don't know that that's going to happen. I don't happen. know. Actually, it was more than that. I, he just seemed to have it all. He seemed uh, balanced. He seemed grounded and and. He's got a caring. real renaissance man I, I vibe. I think he'll be a real listener, and mm-hmm. I think he'll give you, he'll be one of those people that make you think that he doesn't see anybody but you. Mm-hmm. He's listening to every word. Yes. <laughs> I thought, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Even well, he if definitely it's an illusion. Why is Joanne over? So. I like right. him. Yep. Next up, we got Janet Carbon, 59, originally from New Jersey, but she spent most of her life in Florida. She is a chief lifeguard. I liked her, too. Man, how do you not like somebody who saves lives for a living? Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Another and strong woman. Her hobbies are body surfing, softball, and rowing lifeguard boats. Her pet peeves are laziness and being wasteful. I'm aggressive, enthusiastic, and vivacious. I come off tough and stern, but it's not true. She says she's an athlete like Stephanie. And I thought, oh, a fan. Mm-hmm. She even spelled it correctly. <laughs> or someone did. Because yeah. Stephanie is spelled differently. Right. And uh, For Stephanie. Stephanie LaGrosa. Yeah. Or whatever her name is <clears throat> now. Yeah. Yeah, it's not LaGrosa, but. Um, she says it's been her dream to play and win the money. She wants to find a person who's probably most unlike her because people would never suspect their alliance and be the undercover duo. Mm-hmm. She's got a plan. and uh, But she did say she could see herself being like Colby, where she would give the, the game Pick away the because wrong person. of... I think she said, I would definitely do that in my real life. She said, but I try not to do that in, in this game because my family really could use the meat, you know. And I thought, oh, but knowing that about you. She says she's not the mom type, but she. you. No, I think she is. She's she going to get in trouble for it. Well, yeah. And that or it sort could of, be comforting. She, she's like a study in contrast. So I thought, exactly. oh, she's got strong integration skills because she's dealing with mm-hmm. the lifeguards in all these ranges, and they work together. So but she's also people used in their to being teams the and and her, yeah. And so for every pro, there's a con in her. Yes, you know, from that perspective. But I thought I'm thinking she's gonna be she's gonna be able to navigate it and make the merge. Oh yeah, merge final four for me. I thought I don't care. I like her. I'm put her in there because I like her. Okay. And I thought Fix I... Fix your Jabbit I, criteria. And I'm, I fully see that she could strike people the wrong way and go out first. <laughs> but I liked her, and uh, I, I thought, don't tell them your age, though, because she looked younger. Mm-hmm. And I think she's a real worker, and even if, you know, time takes a toll, I don't think it'll do it right away. So I wouldn't tell them my age. Because she looks way younger than 60 to me. Mm-hmm. So, okay. That's how I feel about Janet. You Did you say no merge? No, I said merge. Oh, okay. So we're both <laughs> All right, moving on. Jason Linden, 32, from NYC. He's a, also a personal Again, injury lawyer. Didn't have a positive reaction. And just from the picture, before I even knew he was a, a lawyer. Uh-huh. Not that all lawyers are bad. I'm not saying that. No, they just have... Just don't do I think well on look, Survivor Yeah, always. exactly. There's a challenge. And he noted that himself. Yes. To the point that he says he's not going to tell him that he's a lawyer. Because he knows that that yeah. can work against him. He knows what that impression's like. Though a few, through a few of the clips, I kind of thought, you know, I could be wrong about him. He, he, he might could 
do well in this thing. He's a fan, so he knows what he's up against. And he's like I said, he's not going to tell him he's a liar. And he says he's like Dr. Mike from Triple H. He's going to try to stay quiet initially because he's worried that <laughs> allowing himself to say too much will work against him. Look, he's he's started his own law firm. You can tell the guy's driven. He's got skills. He's a fan. But the whole personal injury lawyer thing is just a hard sell. Lawyer's hard. Personal injury lawyer is even harder. So that... Well, but if he knows enough to keep it under wraps and can do that, then... And he does, you know. and he can. Because, but yeah, I, think I don't know that could. he'll be able to maintain it the whole way, though. That, that's not how Survivor works. It breaks you down and breaks you down and breaks you down. And then you don't have the injury to front like that anymore. His hobbies are sports, music, and learning new things. Pet peeves are bullies, slow walkers, and when someone coughs or sneezes without covering their mouth. I'm charismatic, determined, and direct. I'm a mix of Stephen Fishbach, Adam Klein, Cochran 2.0, Rob Sesternino, and weirdly, a little Tony Vlachos. Buckle up, baby. It's going to be a wild ride. Mm, yeah, well, <laughs> he has no trouble selling himself. No, that's no, for sure. I thought, yeah, he's doing yeah, the, that skill the helped, hard sell. Helped, helped get him on. I went ahead and, and said, gave him the benefit of the doubt. I think he's going to be able to make the merge. Oh, I said merge, but I just looking at his picture, I thought he was a little shady, sneaky looking. Mm -hmm. And but I thought, well, it could serve him well, or it could take him out fast. But I went ahead and said merge because he looks very athletic. All right, moving on, even though he himself says that he's not, especially compared to these guys. Moving on to Kelly Kim. She's 29. Uh, she what? She grew up in California. Costa Mesa and now in Philly. Yeah, she's an MBA student. Also another college soccer player. She says she has a high tolerance for pain, but then she's got this weird fear, phobia of mayonnaise, sour cream, vanilla icing. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, you... Yeah. You sound like they chose you because you're quirky. And then Prope said that she expects people to come to her, that she doesn't reach out. And I thought, she's not a fan. She's a recruit. And that's no kind of social strategy. Well, and her pet peeves are people who wake me up while I'm sleeping or try to talk to me while I'm falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Well, we all know they do that constantly. Yeah out there all together she says she's fun energetic and driven and i thought yeah when you get your sleep but right. and uh, uh she she does play on the harvard varsity Did. soccer team Did. so yeah athletic previously so yeah so she yeah. could she could have really good cardio that could be a plus but she just came across as like a quirky another quirky recruit like simone Wynn from triple h and I think she's going to end up costing them a challenge. She'll blow a puzzle or something, and she's out. So well, I, I got her no merge. Her strategy is to find a meat shield, which isn't a bad strategy. No, that's fine. But um, I don't know. I'm sure she got that off one of the episodes that she managed to watch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I. That's what I said. I don't think she's a fan. I don't think she knows the game. She's very small in stature. And she could be a very easy out, maybe even for Here's the cold no hard merge. facts. They cast some disposables. They do. They, they cast some people who are there because they don't fit. That, because they don't expect them to fit. And they don't expect them to go far. I just think she's on that list. Though I'm frequently wrong about who is and isn't on the list. Yep. But she's on my list. No merge. No merge. Moving on. Lauren Beck, 28, originally from Bakersfield. Now she's in Glendale. Uh, Glendale, California. She's a nanny. I liked that she was a fan of hot Cheetos. I could relate to that. <laughs> and then she threw me a little. She listed herself as being guilty of one of her own pet peeves, saying literally before at the beginning of the oh, sentence. Yeah. I thought, who does that? But I'm intrigued. I do want to see her Britney Spears hmm. impression. I just did not relate. I had a hard time just from the picture, something about it, and I thought, and I don't think I like her, and <laughs> and I, but I don't know why. Anytime that some and she does this through a set of sentences, she didn't do it this succinctly. But when someone basically says they're a people person, red flag. Whoop. <laughs> and she definitely went there, and she got cast, but because 
basically she knew somebody. So according to Prope, she's the first friend of a friend in that she has a friend who is a friend of Jeff Probst, and that person approached and said, and you know, gave them, and Jeff said, send me the, send me the. Actually, info. gave them like a USB stick or something with her video on it, and then yep. she walked up and introduced herself. Even so, it was a good plan. Which I'm sure that wasn't planned. A good, a good one-two punch, and Probst said that's the first time that's actually ever happened. But he said he knew right away after meeting her. I don't person. see it. Uh, he said within seconds. He knew she was going to be My first show. impression doesn't match up, and I'm okay with that. Because Jeff, <laughs> Jeff gets this kind of stuff wrong all the time. True. She says she's bubbly, adaptive, and diligent. Mm -hmm. And she compares herself to Troy Zan, because we're both hot. Sari, <laughs> because she's the best social player. And I'm also a gangster in an Oprah suit. And Sandra, because I have no problem being cutthroat to make power plays to enhance my individual game, she plans to win this game, not just play it. And uh, I, I believe she's a fan, and so that, yeah, that's she got that, that softens for it a little for me. Yeah. And uh, I really wanted to discount her and say no merge, but Probst made me take a closer look, and I think she probably has more going for. Her than I thought at first. So I went ahead and said merge, but I wasn't sure she could win. She was an easy no merge for me. Yeah. And anytime Prope says something super positive about someone, that's usually, <laughs> that's like, an indicator oh no, you, need to, you need to think that maybe not so much. Okay, so we differed on Lauren. Molly. Molly Byman, 27. Can you tell by how she's emoting that she likes Molly? I love Molly. <laughs> Okay. I got all the way. Molly was my next to last person that he worked, and I went, oh, Molly here, sparked. Here, here she is. Originally from Boston, now in Durham, North Carolina. She's currently a law student. She used to teach middle school, which I like. That yes, was cool for to hear five that. years. Because I think yeah. that's another. No one had to manage children, <laughs> especially. Oh, yes, is a skill set that is not an easy thing. Yeah, that's that's going to pay off on Survivor, I think. So her hobbies are running, skiing, biking, hiking. So she's very active. And she's a huge fan, but huge she didn't. Fan. She didn't come off as a big tryhard risk the way Chelsea did. There was something more authentic about how yes. she, like she had a better sense of herself. She's more grounded. Yeah. That's, That's how it. I would say. There you go. She's more grounded. Yeah. And, and in her uh, thoughts and strategy. Fancies she herself seemed, a serious strategist. Yes. Yeah. And she's always wanted to play. She took a semester off law school to play. And Jeff says she's super intelligent and that she has survivor whiteboards up at home with all kinds of strategies on them. And he thinks she could win. Which, that's not always a plus, like Again, you said. Again, red flag, yeah. But... I just discounted that, I guess. Yeah, she her. said she's competitive, resilient, and vibrant. She, um, her family inspires her to take on new challenges, but also to remain grounded, remember her roots, and to be someone they can be proud of. She said she's smart, strong, and not annoying. Here's an interesting little tidbit that you don't normally get to hear she was the first person cast for this season so she was the oh, first solid one i didn't and hear it, that it got built from there so that's hmm. interesting she okay. said the discomfort and being dirty doesn't bother her she can fit in anywhere form relationships with anyone uh she's been the oldest child in i think uh in her immediate family but also within her 13 cousins she's the oldest mm -hmm. And so she does have that. Trailblazer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we both had a uh, almost equally high estimation of Molly. So yeah. definitely she makes the merge. Next up, we've got Nura. Final four and maybe my USB. Okay. We'll revisit that in just a minute. Okay. Miss can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Next up, we got Nura Salmon, 36, originally from London, now North Potomac, Maryland who lists herself as an entrepreneur. Hmm. She fancies posting self-help food and fitness advice on social media 
Her pe- pe- one of her pet peeves is people who are self-absorved. Post much? I don't know. There just seems to be a little bit of irony. And in, people in those. lacking personal hygiene and table manners. She well, identifies mm. with says she identifies with Malcolm because he's easy on the eyes and believes she'll be underestimated. Like hold, wait, wait for it, Fabio and Judd. Not Fabio slash Judd. I don't know if this is just a quirk of the bio I, the way it was written. Mm. Or if it... You caught that too, huh? Yeah. I thought, and I honey, know Fabio I know. is Judd. Yeah. So, uh, again, they cast some certain people. I I think she's going to be another clueless, well, aggressive player like Natalie Cole from David versus Goliath. I bet you they, she, they were looking at her for that season at some point. She just seems to, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Seems to be in that mode. Although, we didn't... Says entrepreneur, but unlike... Natalie from uh, David versus Goliath. We didn't get the like list of businesses or whatever. Yeah, you know she could just be like Missy saying she's an entrepreneur and hasn't really delivered. Well, anything. she did say social media posting on self help, food, and fitness was her thing. And uh, okay, here her pet peeves, which I thought was kind of uh, ironic. She said, "I also cannot stand to be friends." Uh, with people who are selfish, self-absorbed, or stingy. And I thought, I don't know, she seemed a little <laughs> self-absorbed to me mm-hmm. with all the, you know, posting and the... You didn't hear me just say say that. Yes, I did. Oh, okay. I'm agreeing with you. All right. And, I, and that's why I thought it was ironic <laughs> that she posted it that way. Uh-huh. So, uh, mm, I, I... She's got, I, a, she's got uh, an impressive physical presence. Okay. First impression, you see her standing there, and yep. she's got like single digit percent body fat. Which again, I'm gonna I'd question put zero percent. I'm gonna fat. question your logic going out there. <laughs> That's without some fat on you, but she wouldn't know better. She doesn't know the game, and because I think they'll believe they need that female physicality, and she's bringing it in droves. She is the most uh, probably the most impressive female specimen on that tribe well in case you hadn't noticed it she said right out in her bio i'm easy on the eyes yes like malcolm which yeah. i said also yeah i know but i don't think you do i, I did don't think you i did me. i did hear you i swear why did you repeat it because <laughs> it's it's just repeatable because <laughs> i have no merge i Goldfish. didn't particularly care for her I went ahead and went with merge, and I could. Nothing. I was I was on the fence because just like Natalie, she could annoy some people and go early. I totally get that, but I think they're gonna. They might physically. She looks impressive. They might believe they need that physicality, and that might save her. But yeah, as soon as it shuffles and things turn a different route, and she shouldn't need a whole lot of sustenance, maybe to keep that. Though she is muscular, so. You know, I just don't know that she's going to do well without food. I, I'm not sure. She's not there for the end game. No, yeah. I no. I think it's a self-promotion. Here's a vacation. You get to be on TV and you get to self-promote on an even exactly. bigger stage. That's and this exactly. Will, this is going to make her Instagram followers grow. Yep. Probably already has. She's probably already got what she needs out of this. Yeah, I put does, doesn't seem like a fan. She feels like it. Uh, she may be there to to promote herself and then i did the whole not to mention the zero percent body fat going into the game yeah. and um so all right we got that okay. merge merge for me no merge for you and i totally get why you said no merge moving on last but not least we got tommy tummy she i like tummy yeah <laughs> 26 from long beach new york he's a fourth grade teacher we're liking the teachers yep who, Again, teaching. Who knew? We don't managing, have children. <laughs> man, exactly, but managing children, that's he's got some skills already. Yeah. And he says he's not afraid to play in a devious way. So yeah. it, it's not like he feels pressure to play uh, a lil kind of game, yeah. honorable game or anything like that. He thinks the kids will want his him to do his best to, and try to win. All sporty things. So he's physically fit. His uh 
uh, pet peeves. He hates bullies who think they're better than everyone else and talk down to others. Also grumpy and serious people. He said he's outgoing, competitive, and goofy. I have the biggest heart. I love people and would do anything to help them, especially kids. I would say if you combine David Wright's strategy, Davy's social game, and a pinch of Amanda Kimmel's likability, that would be him. <laughs> These three nice players references. were fans yeah. of the game, played hard, and did everything they could do with the hands they were dealt. Yep. And I thought, oh, I like that too. Tummy's a fan. I like his, pos- his positivity, and uh, I like that whole champion of the underdog thing, and Survivor loves yeah. underdog stories. So I got Tummy making the merge. How about you? Oh, yeah, and he's in my final four too. So. <laughs> and, uh, cause couldn't I, wait. We're like I, there right know, after this. I know, I <laughs> know. It bears repeating. And, All right. uh, but I just thought, I think he's going to be goofy, and I think he will be seen as a lesser threat because of that. Okay. There we go. We've made it through. He's a big guy. We've but. painted all the broad strokes with the information that we could uh, gather on each member of the two tribes. And now we're going to pivot to three more answers. So. I want to know who, yeah yeah three more categories okay. who's your first out who are your final four and who do you think is going to be your usb the winner of it all the ultimate survivor all righty first out i put kelly final four molly tommy jamal and janet who all happen to be on the same tribe Mm. I'm not sure I've ever done that before. Well, you picked the purple tribe. But so. I picked them because I like them, and yet I initially said, oh, look, they're the weakest team. History is with you and purple, and plus purple's your favorite color, right? Okay, fine. Yeah, I did not works. you know, record any of that. But So I, too, had Kelly as first out, and I think... I stated that a uh, reason why I think she's going to cost them a challenge, and then boom, that's why. So uh, you, for you, purple loses first, but then they end up having the final four group of winners, <laughs> right? So that's a, that's an interesting yeah. twist. My final four, I had Vance. I've explained that emotional reaction events. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna think about that a little more. Uh, so I had Vince and Chelsea. I think she's going to be able to turn it around, that fan that we're worried that might yeah, try too did. hard. And then I also had Janet and Molly in that final four. Oh, yeah. I, 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 isn't that funny? We both have Janet and Molly in mm-hmm. our final fours. Yeah. Drawn to them. Figured they might be able to find a way to get there. I, they all seem good candidates. I'm usually looking for someone that I think that will play from the middle. And, and end up with that potential to win. The outliers get eliminated is pretty much how the game tends to Did flow. Did you say USB? No, no. I was hit, headed up to that. And then for my winner, I picked Vince. And I picked Molly. Yep. Totally get that. And and I, like I said, I only picked the six people no merge. But if I had to choose one right now, I would it would be between Lauren and Vince for me. So. Oh, I thought you had Vince's going. I know, I didn't. I had him making the merge. Gotcha. But if I were to have to choose another no merge, it would be Vince or Lauren. And I. It's reasonable to choose seven to, to I no know, merge. I know, because they usually merge by 13. Right. Blah, blah. I know the numbers. Okay. I just do as I please. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you want to say just about works the. works out the way it works out. I'm excited. Individuals? No, but I'm excited about the 90-minute premiere. Yes, definitely that. And what are, what's your thought about the Island of the Idols twist? So basically, oh. s- someone's going to get sent out to see... I'm going to back up for a second. I tell you, I'm going to share a thought I had about this cast. Okay. Because they, they're they selling Island of the Idols. They're selling this season with Sandra and Boston Rob. Yes. That was like the first video to drop was really featuring them. Yes, and everything's kind of featured them. I think the cast is secondary and got viewed that way. And this this cast is a lot of people who've had a shot before. And I don't know that they... I bet you... I just... I've got a lingering impression now that they didn't put as much effort into this cast and didn't feel that they needed to because of the twist. Well, and that they were going to let Rob and Sandra do some of the work. They're paying them to do the work. Right. 
to work with these people. So yeah, that. So I just wanted to share that impression. Now with. let's talk about this twist. And we gotta give in, you something to work with. In in the sense that uh, I know that didn't. That's that's uh, that's. There's no way to take that, but as a negative towards this cast. But that was the impression that I was yeah. left with. In, in that sense. And so the way it's going to work is that they're going to get voted, picked. Someone's going to get picked and sent out to the Island of the Idols. Now, off of gonna, a tribe that loses or that, I think they said different things, maybe different ways to get sent out to their Island. I don't, I don't remember oh, the okay. specifics. Basically they're going to go visit Rob and Sandra who are working that are living out there on this Island. And Rob, is it was excited probe said because he said he's going to build the best survivor shelter that's ever been built yeah they offered to build it for them that they didn't have to do that and they'd build them a shelter to live in and they both said no if they were going to do it they were going to do it right and so they go out there and uh either rob or rob or sandra or i guess both of them potentially do a skill review they have a teach teachable moment with them where they're going to pass on some knowledge and then they offer to uh, for the uh, ability to get an advantage. So, like, say Rob offers to teach them how to make fire. And then uh, they'll say, after the lesson's over, Rob will say, okay, so you can challenge me to fire making. And if you win, you get an advantage. And if you don't... You get a disadvantage. You, yeah, you get a penalty. You lose a vote or something like that, whatever, from yeah. that perspective. And and then Prope said that they allowed Rob and Sandra to potentially sweeten the deal if they didn't yes, go for it. Yes, they've given them some they, leeway. Yeah, some leeway so that they could try to, to really make that more interesting. And so that's how that's going to play out. I'm concerned that, and I've expressed this before, that Propes has lost his perspective on what's interesting and what's good about Survivor and what we want to see, that this could end up taking up too much time. That's my biggest fear. It's an interesting twist. Yeah. I also think it's a great way to audition slash train new potential hosts. Mm -hmm. And so uh, from that perspective, you could totally see this being a training ground for Sandra or Boston Rob, although I'm sure Sandra wants to play again. And Boston Rob said that you know has had said that he didn't want to, didn't care anything about it. But this <clears throat> this idea got him back this out there, obviously. Him, yes. Yeah. From so from that perspective, what do you think? What is that? Okay. What can we look forward to? What was your first impression about hearing the twist and how you think it's going to affect the well, season? Well, my first impression was like, you don't need that, it. That seems silly. We don't need to. Do that. But more that I I've looked at it and thought about it, I thought, well, it could be really interesting, and I do trust rob and sandra to come up with interesting things and mm -hmm. to be to have this their own personal skill sets to to know what we want to see i mean sandra is one of the biggest survivor fans she really is and she loves to meet people on from other seas she's a fan and she always has been mm -hmm. that i really like about her i've never gained any particular enjoyment from watching her play or i mean come on who couldn't have beat lil that one season granted that, that's a whole nother thing yeah that's a, that's another let thing. me finish my thought okay um but she does love the game she is a fan i was it. just trying to agree with you there <laughs> i respect that don't, don't. Mm. okay and i've lost my train of thought now you know if you do that to me i lose my train of thought right Okay, Swim anyway. Back around the bowl. It'll come back around. <laughs> yeah, not always. Okay, anyway, I'm warming up to the idea. I do realize that it has to take something away from being able to see the interaction in camp. I'm always um, somewhat disappointed about that in any season where things, just like last year, you know, last season, it was, you know, that took away. Edge and yet, I still took enjoyed. Away. Uh, you know occasional thing from out there but it just depends on how much time this takes but it could be interesting too so i'm just really Look trying at to the stay investment they open. made they built these gigantic statues of them now that i like sandra's fine but 
I'm and I people, like that does not look like Rob in any way, shape, no, or form. No, it doesn't. It does look like Sandra a little bit. I it thought does, it did good it with that. Does but it, it's look like not Sandra. Rob's nose, so it like messes no, up the whole does. recognition ability there. If I were him, I'd be rebuilding that <laughs> statue. That. Yeah. <laughs> While he was out there. That's what I would be spending my time doing. But that just look at that. That and I like it from the perspective of we talk about the survivor gods and so here are the gods and you're going to go visit the gods and you're going to yeah, be granted yeah. knowledge and then you're going to get challenged by the gods all that the spin that Propes has yeah, for it yeah that's is, a quick blah blah it's well no it's really good I like that yeah. if it's in the mythos it's in the in the survivor universe all that works really well if it ends up taking away the way Ghost Island did or taking away the way Edge of Extinction did from the core gameplay then you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna enjoy that. I think I know what makes it interesting. And Survivor's this big social game, and if you're hiding the social game from us, we're gonna get to the end of the season, and we're gonna feel unsatisfied. That's my fear. That's, that's the, what it is. The yeah. idea that this could come to play, and that the advantages that they get could be in the challenges and things like that, and that maybe the influence, like I said, of Sandra on someone like. Elaine or Janet, if she's able to convey some nugget of survivor wisdom that ends up having an impact on the game, then I'll think it was worth it and it has value. So well, the potential's there, but because they mess with the, it doesn't seem like it's going to mess with the core game mechanic. But you have to see some development but in it the takes social game. Time away. Yeah, you got to see somebody's social game. You got to have some sense of why when you get to but the end but what about this what if you get to know so much more about the ones that do go out there as each person goes out there uh we get to see them individually and see their interaction with rob and sandra mm -hmm. and they're you know them being tested you learn more about them individually so that's new that we would get that kind of time with if it an ties individual. together if it helps in the end helps you go oh oh it went from they went from a to b to c and then this interaction on the island of the idols helped them go from b to c it could be a really rewarding understandable experience at the end so the potential's there i don't want to completely discount it when i first heard this i was like wow what a cop out you don't need yeah. boston rob and sandra to sell a season survivor sells itself you, you know that kind of thing so i i was hesitant i pulled back and and i do this with a lot of them and a lot of time i'm right don't mess with them. the core <laughs> core mechanic <laughs> of the game you know just yeah, to, yeah. You, you put all your energy into the cat getting the cast the right ingredients and then the cake bakes itself now get out of the way just show us how it how the mixing happened and and show us how we end up with that end result and, and it better make sense you know don't don't make us feel like you stole something from us at the end of the season uh, an interesting thing to me also will be seeing the struggle that the people that get sent out there how much are they going to tell about what happened yeah, if it it's because it has the potential to work against them. It could exactly. be exactly. We've seen things like those kind of advantages be a stigma that work against you. Well, and uh, they've said that Rob and Sandra really don't want the people that haven't been out there to know too much, so they're going to try to convince them not to tell. Mm -hmm. So I think that could be interesting to see how well those kinds of things work and their struggles about what do, do I tell? What do you do think I, Robin, who do I tell? Do you think Robin Sandra will have access to what's actually happening in the game? Like what if, Oh, what I if, bet they drag it out of them. What, or what if they go out there and Robin Sandra got video and they, <laughs> and they oh, say, Elaine, no. sit down. I want you to see this. And then Sandra says, this is how, uh, Karishma was <laughs> reacting to you. Do you see that look on well, Chelsea's that would certainly face? Certainly, be interesting. Yeah, and and to see them doing that kind of thing, and then to see someone be able you to make it. You see how they reacted? Are you paying attention? Uh, Are you being self-aware? Right, and then to be able to make a corrective, you know, course change to help. Well, the, th that would be. That I would, bet they won't have that. No, but. that would be too invasive of Robin, Sandra. Uh, injecting themselves into the no, no, actual they would just, challenge. They, no, no, no. They would the have actual footage game. that they're reviewing with them like a coach. I know that, but they're still... Or a god. That, that's over the top. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's directing them in their uh, time away from them gameplay. I, I don't agree with that. Okay, I don't that's understand too much what you're control saying. over the game that way. If there's to be able to say, look, there, here's a mistake you were making. I want to show you something that you did. Here's yeah, the footage. But still, I think that's over. If they the top. lay that out for someone. No, I won't allow that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there's the twist. I, I'm uh, so I'm uh, hopeful, to think hesitantly about. hopeful that that ends up being a valuable element, and I I want to find the positive spin on things because well, you don't want to invest in negative energy. You know me. I'm more just go with the flow and see what what happens happens. It's Survivor. Yeah, I'm defensive of my favorite show. That's all. So I know. if you're gonna get in there and muck with it, I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna have an opinion on it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that's a given, sweetheart. Uh huh. All right. What else? What do we need to do now? Find my glasses. Yep. All right. Well. We got part two of Jabbit coming up, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, we're looking forward to hearing what you thought about these castaways and how well you think they're going to do and the twist of this season the feedback for part two is due noon on saturday september 21st we need you to keep it in that three minute range whether you're writing it up or whether you're calling in the voicemail line recording your on audio uh, we definitely need you to be cognizant of that. We've done a, just the big broad strokes for you. You don't have to rehash any of this. And the bio and you, all that. You don't even have to reference everyone. You pick your, you know, who's first out, who your final four are, or whoever you had a reaction to when you're judging these books by their covers. We're looking forward to hearing that. The voicemail line's 206-350-1547, toll-free 844 844- Six four three eight seven three seven. The email Joanne and Stacy show at gmail dot com. Saturday, September twenty first, by noon along. Pacific time. Okay. I want to thank Paul for the roster. Yes, good and job. And the website logo for season thirty nine. Awesome job as always, Paul. Also, big thanks to Steve for all of his work on the JSFL website and maintaining it all. Thank you, Steve. Mm-hmm. The website is not up just yet. Steve's family has had a major life event this week, and uh, he's going to try to get it done by Tuesday. So it's it'll be here sometime next so week. So let's just take a quick minute to explain that. So we, if you're new to the podcast and we, we do have new people joining from time to time, checking us out, subscribing on YouTube or picking us up and iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. We do a fantasy league on the side. The idea being that you're going to go in and pick who you think is going to win it all, who's going to be voted out first, and four people that you think will be safe and make it through that first tribal council. That's your first set of objectives that you need to follow in the fantasy league. Okay. And if you're, if you are already, uh, we're playing the game at the end of last season, then you're already signed up in your passwords. Our, everything is still the same. Yep. Um, so, so we don't have a record of your passwords and everything. So you need to make sure you keep a record <laughs> of your password and your usernames because we don't do that. Um, if you are new to JSFL, your deadline to sign up to play for this season is 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific time on the 25th before the episode airs and um then the registration closes for this season um and if you would go to the website if you want to play and read the official rules listed there then that would help you understand how the game's played and like stacy said you've got to choose somebody you think will win the game you've got to pick the first person you think will be voted off and four people who will be safe and again, everyone, please remember to hit your submit button. And once you have chosen your USB for the season, go back to the picks page and your USB should be highlighted in bold. USB stands lettering. for ultimate survivor yeah, bonus. The, That's who you think is going to win the season. Person you chose to win the season will be in bold letters on that page as soon as you enter USB. And if they are not, 
they have not been entered, go back and do it and make sure you hit submit. Okay. Because every season. That happens. It invariably. Happens. And no matter what I say. So we're, we're still trying to get a to season. Try to help. It's going to happen. <laughs> we're going to have everybody have one. So... And you can tell them about your side challenge. That's right. We do offer a side challenge opportunity. For a few. For a few. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it, it re Not hundreds, but a few. It reopens at the beginning of the season. So the idea is that <clears throat> the winner of the side challenge, which means the person who's in the side challenge who has the highest GSFL score, We'll pick a song for the loser of the side challenge, the person with the overall lowest score at the end of the season, to perform a parody of it. Like we're looking forward to getting from Iron Dave in this next, next week. week. Yes. Yeah. So you'll need to send us an email before the first show airs. Yes. To let us know that you want to be in the side challenge. Yep, no that, matter how many times you've played, send right. me an email. You got to send the email to Joanne and Stacy Show at gmail.com. So that uh, we know to keep track of your score there. And, and I, you want to think twice about that. It can add some extra yeah, pressure. Yeah, it's stressful. I wouldn't do <laughs> it. it. Could, <laughs> yeah. I don't do it. Right? But so No. There's a select elite few who participate. You're welcome to come join me there if you think that you're pretty good at knowing what's going on. And that brings me to one last point is that... Our goal is to be spoiler-free. So, like I said, if that's true that Tom Laidlaw is spoiling things in his interviews, my immediate reaction was, not going to look at anything from him. Not going to listen to anything from him. No interviews, no nothing. Right. And that's fine. If you want to go check that out, please, though, don't participate in JSFL. We that's Those things aren't compatible. We're not interested in having someone who knows spoilers play in our Fantasy League game. That's cheating. We, in you know, we don't need that. So no, and it's just for fun. Come on. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Uh, stay away from that stuff. Seasons that Sandra's been a player in, I'll mention before, have historically had spoilers in them. She's not a player. She's an advisor, a survivor guide in this season. So uh, hopefully that won't follow her into this season. Hopefully the laid law stuff ends up being pretty minor. Uh, but avoid that if you want to be part of the JSFL in our fantasy league. Okay, that's all I need to say oh, about that. That was too much business. Too much? Okay. Well, we're excited for the season regardless of how the twist may or may not play out because we love Survivor. We hope you do too, and you're welcome to join us on the journey this season. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited to hear what everybody else thinks about the new cast and the twists and all that stuff. Yeah, do you think they're going to break the orange curse? Orange historically gets destroyed. <laughs> so <laughs> this season, you know, are they going to overcome that? Or the, is this is Lyro the next orange train wreck? Looking well, forward to hearing your thoughts. It's not a question for you, No, baby. no, I do, I, but I did want to say something. <laughs> All I, right. I was about to say uh -huh. that my really don't care either way, and then I thought, wait a minute. You my do. final four are on purple, so yeah. I just soon it didn't change this season. <laughs> right? Okay. So the orange curse is in effect, according <laughs> to Joanne. We're interested to hear what you thought. Mm. Have a good one. No curses on Survivor. Oh, my God.